My name is Erin Smithers, and today we're going to talk about employment, employment training, how to get a job, what to do once you have a job. So we're going to, these are the steps we're going to go through. We're going to learn about jobs, uh, how to prepare yourself, how to update your resume, how to apply for positions, how to interview for positions, when you accept the offer, how you should work hard, and how you can be responsible. So the first thing you want to do is learn about job opportunities. You want to look in a few different places. That's where you can find out if people are hiring, what opportunities there are. So you could look in a newspaper at the classifieds. You can ask the people around you if they know of anywhere hiring. Sometimes people post on Facebook or social media that they're looking for a certain type of job and what their qualifications are. And that's sort of a way to network or you could just ask the people around you, ask people in your family, your friends, if they, if their business is hiring or if they know of anywhere that's hiring. Or you can also just ask for an application at your favorite stores and at your favorite places. So if you wind up going somewhere a lot, like to the movies or to a certain restaurant, you can always ask to speak to the manager and ask if they're hiring. This is just a good way you, you can find a job at a place you're comfortable with and that you already know. And then you can also look online. There's a lot of opportunities online through different websites or even apps where you could find job opportunities. Places like Monster, Indeed, and even Craigslist. A lot of organizations post their positions on Craigslist. So once you kind of have an idea of what is available, you want to prepare yourself for applying for the job. Learn about the company as much as you can. Go on their website, go to the building if you can, and try to see if there's anything that you can learn about how they work, how they function. You want to learn about the position, what it entails, what your responsibilities would be. You want to make sure you have transportation set up. That's very important. You want to practice interviews. You can have application or your interview clothes ready if they do happen to call you in for an interview. And then clean up your social media. A lot of places now look at your social media life to see what kind of a person you are. So you want to make sure your photos or your videos are professional. You want to make sure you're not cursing or posting videos of you at a wild night out. You want to show them that you're professional, that you're a hard worker. And unfortunately, something on your social media could prevent you from getting the perfect job. So once you've kind of looked at the position, looked at the, the business, and it's somewhere that you want to work, it's time to update your resume. So you want to make sure all of the information is up to date. This is going to be done very often, even when you have a job. You want to always be updating your uh, accomplishments, your goals, any trainings you've gone to. Make sure your resume is always up to date. You want to use a professional email address. It's very easy to make one at Google. You can just set up your first name, your last name at gmail.com. You want to have something like that. I still have an email address I made when I was 14 years old, but I'm not going to put that on my resume. So you want to make a fresh new email that can be used just for any job opportunities. And then you also want to have three different people read over your resume to make sure there are no mistakes or any spelling errors. You might think that you looked it over and it's good enough, but I can't tell you how many times I've looked over my resume, my sister's resume, and there still were mistakes that neither of us caught. So if you have three different people looking it over, you're definitely going to make sure there is no mistakes and that everything is perfect and ready to go. You have to realize that your resume is an extension of you and it's what people see. It's your whole history. It's who you are. So if there's a lot of spelling errors or if there's grammatical errors, it's going to look poorly on you. So you always want to make sure that everything looks perfect. And then you want to print it out on a thicker white paper that they call cardstock. This is going to make it seem extremely professional and easier to stand out in a bunch. If there's a bunch of resumes that someone has in their hand and there's one really thick piece of paper, it's going to stand out. You want to make sure you use black ink and save an up-to-date copy on your computer or have one in your email. That way, if you ever need to send it out and you're not at home or on your home computer, you have a copy with you as well. 
and we're gonna look more in depth at a resume. So first you're gonna have your name and this is just a test resume. So you can make yours look a little bit different if you want, but this is definitely all of the information you wanna have on your resume. Your name in big bold letters, along with your phone number, your professional email, and your address, that should all be up at the top. Then you're gonna have a summary of why you want the job or some people put their objective. So something like to utilize all of my skills, to be the best worker I can be, something like that that's gonna show why they should hire you. What your goal is, what your goal is. Your past education, you don't have to go very far back. If you have college experience, that's what they wanna know. If you don't have college experience, put your last educational history, which could be high school, or if you got your GED, just the last kind of diploma you were awarded. Your employment history, again, you don't have to go all the way back to when you first started working. They just wanna know uh, maybe the last two or three places you worked at, or what you've been doing for the last maybe five years, five or 10 years, something like that. Next, you could list your hobbies or interests. This is where you can put any thing you do, extracurricular, if you're a member of a key club, or if you do something like 4-H, or you volunteer your time, you can put that in there. Also, if you have any professional skills, you wanna add that in there as well. Any of your trainings, uh, if you're CPR certified, or if you know how to code HTML, or just any sort of skills, if you know how to use Microsoft Office, something that's gonna be beneficial for them to see that you can do, and kind of something extra to give you a little bit of an edge over the other applications. You also want to include a cover letter. So a cover letter is basically just a letter introducing yourself, explaining why you want the job, what you can bring to the position, Again, you wanna start with your name in bold. It should be the biggest font. Then you also wanna have your phone number, your email, your address, all up at the top. And then you want to have the name, the position, and the address of the person who is hiring. You wanna include a summary of why you want the job or what your objective is. And again, a little bit of an introduction to yourself. And then a signature. And then along with your resume and your cover letter, they're gonna ask for references. References are people that can vouch for you, people who have worked with you. It could be personal references, but most places prefer a professional. Again, you're gonna start with all of your information at the top. You want that to stand out. And then you're gonna have at least two professional references. It could be managers, it could be, if you did an internship, the name of your supervisor for your internship, or your counselor at school, and then a personal reference you can include too to vouch for your personality. So next you want to, now that you have your resume done, you have your cover letter done, you did your research on some positions, you wanna apply. So you can fill out an application, you wanna send in your resume, your cover letter, and your references, either by email or by hand. You want to, again, double check, make sure all that information is accurate because this is a piece of paper representing you. The person who is hiring doesn't know you. All they know is what you wrote down on that piece of paper. So it's okay to brag about yourself, but you want to make sure that everything is honest and truthful. Also, when you're applying for a position, you do not have to disclose a disability, whether it's on their application or in an interview. Legally, no one can ask you about a disability or your religion or anything that is not pertinent to the job abilities. So as long as you can make sure that you are doing the job properly with, with or without reasonable accommodation, then you do not have to disclose anything. So you applied for a position and they're gonna have you come in for an interview you want to prepare, especially if this is one of your first interviews. It can be a little bit nerve wracking, but with a little bit of practice, you will find that it gets easier each time. So you can actually sit down and practice interviewing with someone. If you uh, do a quick Google search, you can find practice interview questions. You can print them out and give them to someone and have them 
fake interview you. So you can get that practice and you can practice answering the questions. You also want to make sure that you have questions to ask the interviewer. It shows that you have an interest in the job and that you're very serious about the position. So always make sure to have at least two questions ready that you can ask the person who is interviewing you. It could be questions about the job, it could be questions about training, it could be questions about the business as a whole, but it shows that you're serious. And then be aware of what the position is and know about the company. This goes with the research that you already have done, hopefully. So it's important to know about the company you could possibly be working for. And you might actually even get asked questions about what you know about the company at your interview. So being prepared with those answers is going to make you look fantastic. Bring another copy of your resume, your cover letter, and your references with you to the interview, at least one copy. Um, you might find that they forgot to print them out or they didn't have them handy or that you're actually interviewing with more than one person. It also shows that you're prepared and it shows that you're professional. And then definitely want to make sure you're dressing appropriately so that you can make a great first impression. Again, these people don't know you. They don't know that you're a great person or that you're a hard worker. All they know is what they see. So you want to make sure your first impression is the best impression. And this is how you can do that. You want to make sure that you have neat hair, that you shower beforehand, that you use deodorant, that you brush your teeth. You want to dress nicely and professional or dress for the job. Um, if it's in a business setting, maybe have a business casual outfit with a collared shirt or a blazer. And you want to make sure that all of your clothes are clean, wrinkle-free, they don't have holes in them. You want to look professional. You want to make sure that you're smiling. And you want to use positive body language. Try to not keep your arms crossed in front of you. This is going to make you look closed off. Start with a handshake. Um, you want to sit up straight. Feel, have that feeling of confidence come through you so that they can see that as well. So what are some questions that they could ask you on the interview? These are most of the questions that you probably will get asked. I've been asked them at almost every interview I've been to. So you want to find out how to practice, how to answer these questions. This is a great way to do that. So what is your biggest strength and what is your biggest weakness? Now you don't want to really answer negative about yourself. So you want to try to find an answer especially for what is your biggest weakness, that's still kind of a positive. A good answer for what is your biggest weakness could be that you're too much of something that's good. So you're too organized or you might be too much of a people person and you try to go out of your way to make everybody happy. What is your biggest strength? Brag about yourself. This is the opportunity where you can brag about yourself and let them know how awesome you are where do you see yourself in five years? They want to know if you're going to be at this job for a long time or if you're just going to stay and then leave if something better comes. Why do you want to work here? Might seem like a silly question because a lot of people need a job to live on their own or you might just really like the position. But they want to know what about this position specifically seemed interesting to you. So kind of compliment the business here. Compliment the position. Why should we hire you? Again, brag about yourself. Brag about how you're a hard worker. Brag about how you always show up on time or you never take a sick day. Tell me about a time when you had to fix a problem. They want to know about your problem fixing skills. They want to know how you would handle a situation under pressure or under stress. They want to know the next question, why did you leave your last job? They want to know if you were fired or if there was an altercation or a problem. So they want to know if they can trust you and rely on you. How do you handle stress or pressure? Again, kind of similar to the other question where you had to explain how you fixed a problem. But again, they want to know how you are under pressure. And then describe a difficult work situation and how you solved it. Again, you probably won't get asked the same question three different times, but you might get asked a variation of one of these questions. They just want to know how you handle problematic situations and how you are under pressure and under stress. How do you handle failure? Everybody fails. That's a given. Everybody at one time has failed a project or failed a task. So they want to know how, what you did, how you handled it. Did you pick yourself back up and just get right back on your, your task and try to fix it? Or did you kind of break down and get upset and quit? Or, you know, obviously they don't want to hear that. 
but you also don't want to lie. So try to figure out a way, uh, a situation even, or a specific failure that you had and how you fixed it, how you made it better. And then what makes you better suited than another candidate? This is along the lines of why should we hire you and not the other applicants. So again, brag about yourself. Talk about everything that you can bring to the position, why you're the perfect fit for this job. And because you aced the interview and you did all the research and you showed up looking professional and clean and you had a fantastic first impression, you got the job, right? Hopefully. So now what? Now you have the job. Well, you want to always work hard. You want to make sure that everything you said to them was honest and truthful. So be a hard worker. Don't show up late. Don't call out sick unless you really need to. But make sure that you give them enough notice. Make sure you always have transportation. Make sure you're doing your job correctly. And then ask for help if you need it. Always be on time. Be a team player. Don't complain. Try to be flexible. If people are giving you new projects, it's a fantastic great idea if in the beginning of your job you try not to say no. You want to show them that you are a team player, that you are a hard worker, and they're trying to test the waters to see how much you can do. So if it's possible, just try to do as much as you can because you're going to show them that you are reliable and that they chose right when they chose you for the job. Also, you want to help others if you have you know, some extra time. That's really going to show that you're a team player and then still smile, still show that positive body behavior. You're sitting up straight, you're oozing confidence, and you're gonna have that job for a long time. So if you have any questions, or if you want me to send you any of the slides about the resumes or the practice questions, please send me an email, shoot me a phone call, and I will send those over. And I hope this helps you feel more confident going into a job interview and possibly, hopefully, landing a job. Thank you.